It's the Jim and Terry Show coming to you from the Hobbit Hole Studio in Bob Cage. And I'm your host, Terry, and I'm your other host, Jim. And we are a couple of grandfathers. Yes, yes, and we just went through Father's, Father's, Father's Day, Day, Day. Oh, I like the way you do that echo, echo, <laughs> echo. <laughs> father's, Father's, Father's. All right, so what did Father's Day have in store for you? Well, um, it was good. It was really good, basically because, uh, you know, three of my four sons, and I can't expect my fourth son to fly from Calgary. Uh, I got to see them. when We had a little chat and talk, and and uh, they were very gracious and actually acted as if they were listening to me. <laughs> I even said to them, it's because it's Father's Day. You're listening to what I have to say. Uh, and then slack. I got a little, you know, assortment of... Uh, of gifts, which, uh, you know, a gift card, which I, I love, and I, I, I other gifts, uh, T-shirt, pillow, you know, do stuff Do we like need that. gifts? Do we, no, I, well, do we I, want gifts at well, this stage in life? Personally, I mean, I, I, I told you earlier, I said I was at church, and everybody's going, what do you do? Oh, what are you going to do for Father's Day? I said, I don't think I'm doing anything. I think I'm just going home, because everybody else, where I usually go out for lunch after church, they were all going somewhere for celebrating Father's Day or something. But when I got home, uh, my daughter-in-law said, hey, we're, we got eggs benedict. you want some? Yeah, sat down, ate that, and got some gifts. And then my uh, uh, two uh, younger sons came over, and we sat and chatted and had a good time. And got some gifts. And got some gifts, and, and uh, that was really good. But, I mean, Father's Day, to me, uh, it, if nothing had to happen, I wouldn't have sat there in my tears and go, nobody cares for me. I know my kids love me. I think that's the big point is it's just a conversation with your kids to reestablish contact i mean you're no longer the authority figure they have their men they have yep. their own views on things so they don't look to you for well maybe they do do they look to you for wisdom um i think sometimes like it may mean yeah, I think sometimes. I think they listen to it and realize, but I also think they also think dad's really stuck in old school, you know, like he's a fundamental Christian, you know, that kind of thing. But talk about that kind of stuff. I mean, you're not dying, are you? Because you got something that's very angelic for <laughs> Father's Day. Yeah, that's... Uh, I like musical instruments. I would love to collect them. The Hobbit Hole is not big enough for this hobby. I'm not no, sure you need how a, I You need a bigger studio. Well, this instrument that I did receive for Father's Day from my kids is a very small instrument. Very easy to play. Well, yes, it's easy to play because it's tuned. And, uh, yeah, Angelic, the lyre. Well, it's a lyre. It and looks like a little harp. It is a little harp, a little yeah, yeah. Celtic harp, maybe. Yeah. And it comes with a, a pickup that you can attach to it. I think that's so cool. Yeah, I'm hoping <laughs> to do some direct-in recording into my DAW and see what I can concoct. Maybe the truth will come out of the liar. Ah, ah. <laughs> Maybe she just anyway. write a song, Liar, Liar, or something. Liar, Liar, Pants on Fire, or Pyre, Pyre, Liar. How many words rhyme with liar? Anyway, yes, Father's Day was good for me. My daughter, who's still at home going to university, um, she got up in the wee hours of the morning and wrote all kinds of nifty little notes in the coffee pot saying it's all ready, ground up, put in, just pressed, go, and your coffee's ready in the morning. And she had some signs up, Happy Father's Day. But the best of all was sharing Father's Day with widows. So oh. how's that? So, yeah, Jan, my mother-in-law, and Kathy, our good neighbor and friend, yeah, it's sharing, sharing what Father's Day is to people who don't have a male. Uh, I partner. think I did the same. Is that right? I think I can't remember, but I think I probably took uh, the widow uh, shopping. I might have done that. Um, I don't know what Father's Day night or evening it's never night I mean, did you barbecue? i'm old i'm home by did you seven. barbecue come on tell me about no that. i did not but that was, was that a, a t-shirt that was, was a funny joke i think it was scott jackson that posted it but it's something along the lines of uh, mother's day the restaurants are full father's day they ask you to barbecue you know it's quite a difference <laughs> well on mother's day shouldn't the guys be doing the barbecuing too or whatever else the the well you can bet your sweet life they do yeah. And then, then come Father's Day, you do the barbecuing. 
Yes, well, would you have it any other way? No. No, because no. if you know what you're doing, you don't want anybody else to touch your barbecue. Yeah. You're very possessive if, yeah, if you yeah. are. But I don't, I don't even have a barbecue, so I'd have to use my son's. You don't have a little electric smokeless grill or whatever they call the foreman things that you can no. use? No. Yeah, okay, so go ahead and use. I have a hot air cooker. Which I would yes. love the one that's about the size of your, your, your oh, monitor so there. Fryer, liar, pyre. We're getting all these mm. words that sound like. Well, maybe I could make something to eat and you could play the liar. I could. I could also <laughs> tell the truth once in a while. That so did you go anywhere to eat? You didn't, did you? No, you barbecued. We barbecued great steaks. We, we? We, I barbecued, but my daughter had the you know lion's share of the chef's work and I just did the barbecuing hmm. and that was that was the way i like it i like you know a small roll just let me do the meat i can do the meat mm-hmm. <laughs> meat and greet and i got cards yes cards they do do you get cards where people write in yes cursive or printing but personal sentiments besides yes. the printed stuff yes or do you get cards with I get cards with both. Name I get cards or with cards both. with just the name. I get cards usually with both. Usually, my kids write something. You know, you know. Uh, can't believe you're still alive. No. <laughs> <laughs> can't believe your lifestyle hasn't killed you yet. <laughs> we were calculating how much money we'll save when you're dead. <laughs> <laughs> You're a strain of morbid thoughts for Father's Day. Okay, tell me about Grandfather's Day. That came and passed. Nobody slipped me a grandfather. And you know what? I don't want them to. I think it's just a money grab, with all honesty. Don't start that. I mean, you know, I have a big family, as you know. So there's there, there's 14 grandkids. So there's 14 presents there, not to mention the parents' presents for Christmas. All those 14 and the six Wait, the eight uh, sons and daughter-in-laws, every month sometime, and some months there's three birthdays, you know, it's the last thing we need now is, oh, here's your great grandkid card or, you know, your grandkid card from grandpa. There's another 14. I'd rather it not happen. <laughs> so I don't need it coming back either. I'm more thinking <laughs> along the lines of simplicity. You are a father when you're children are small you are a grandfather when they have children so by default it is grandfather's day for you as well so yeah. just a question um is there wisdom that you try to pass on always and not not so much to my grandkids i don't see much of them you know i mean i live with four of them uh but i mean they're not hanging out where i'm living mm-hmm. and uh yeah, I, if, if there's any wisdom to be, you know, I think I contributed to my, my one of my young granddaughters learning to ride a bike. Mm-hmm. I stopped her and said, "Here's how it's done," uh, you know. But <laughs> but it was her, it was her father and mother that really got that going, yeah. not me. Yeah. But I did give her some advice about, you know, because you, you know what, same as when you're driving a car, and I told her this: when you drive a car, it's the same. You don't look at the front of the car; you look ahead, and that's where you're heading. So I think it helped. The next day, she was riding all over the place. Yeah, she completely conquered it. Now I think I contributed maybe, maybe a you know five percent to that event, but I contributed a little. And then of course my sons are always going to get words of what I think are wisdom. Is whether they take it as wisdom is another story. <laughs> yeah, wisdom seems to be uh, how you slice it. Whether you think you're giving it or people think it's wisdom that they are receiving. It's um, funny. It's funny. I got to tell you something funny, if I may. <laughs> Of course you can. You know, uh, every now and then, if I get excited, lots of times I'll stand up, and uh, or I'll be standing up to go to the washroom and I haven't finished my talk. And a couple of times, my kids have said, "Quit talking down to me." I said, "Oh no, I'm just going to the washroom. I'm not. I'm not. You know, like well, you're towering over me." Oh yeah, sorry. Oh, you know. you're making your point by standing up. Well, okay. I don't mean to be that Is that way. how it's perceived? That's how it's perceived. Ah, like, what okay. do you, like, you know, and so I went, well, the last time it happened, I said, no, I'm just getting up to go to the washroom, but I haven't finished my point. So I'm finishing it and getting as close to the washroom as oh, I can. Oh, sure. That's uh, the justification. You're, yeah. One of the lessons in proxemics is the position of the body. So if oh, you yeah. start to 
<laughs> no, but they did have to comment on the red tie I had on the power tie. Oh, power <laughs> no, tie? No, I didn't okay. have a power tie. <laughs> All right. I'm thinking of grandfathers as people who we get the best role, which is really have the kids, if we're babysitting, have them for a short time. If we're babysitting their kids or looking after our grandkids, we get the joy of supporting them. If we are looking after them and we get to go to their activities, whether it's music lessons, mm. drama class presentations at school, or sports after school, that's something that I enjoy as well. So when I was in Calgary, I got to attend a soccer game and practice, two of them, and I got to see gymnastics as well. So wow. talk about uh, feeling connected to your grandkids. It's when you show up. And that takes me to another one. Maybe we'll talk about it later. Most of parenting, according to one book I was reading, is just showing up. I Either. can see that. Yeah. yeah. A lot of wisdom in that. Wisdom on Father's Day. Just show up. Okay. And people will make you eggs benedict. Yes, and it was delicious. Or barbecue for you. It was Or good. something else. It was good. All right. Jim and Terry Show winding down our Father's Day podcast. If you have any thoughts on Father's Day, experiences that you want to share, maybe you have some wisdom to share from this vantage point in life wherever you are our ones and twos if you're listening right in to the Jim and Terry show we might not agree but we'll let you know when we don't <laughs> okay. right. bye everyone bye bye for now <laughs>